Before Jesus had ascended to heaven, leaving his disciples with that mission to reach the world, he told them to wait. Wait in Jerusalem. That's a strange command. The whole world waits for this good news of his death and resurrection. Why wouldn't they rush out to every town and village? How could they not proclaim this message of salvation and forgiveness? But Jesus told them to wait. He told them to wait so that they might receive help from the Holy Spirit, power. Standing on the mountain before his ascension, Jesus commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The disciples had their calling, their commission, but Jesus promised them a descending power by which they would reach the world. They would receive a baptism in the Holy Spirit. So they returned to Jerusalem and waited. One of those waiting disciples was Peter. Peter had long followed Jesus. He was so often the first to speak and the first to rush to Jesus' aid. The night of Jesus' crucifixion, Peter had denied even knowing Christ. Overcome by the events of Jesus' arrest, his trial, his beating, Peter three times disassociated himself with Jesus. At Jesus' resurrection, Peter must have felt humiliated and ashamed of his actions. How could he follow Jesus again, having denied him so vehemently? But Jesus had shown him grace and kindness. Jesus had reestablished Peter's place amongst the disciples, calling him to again take up his place in this great commission to the world. As Peter waited in Jerusalem, praying and waiting with the other disciples, I wonder what that promise of power must have meant to him. How would the Holy Spirit change him and embolden him? What must Peter have thought as he opened his eyes that day in the upper room and watched the tongues of fire descend on each of their heads? What must he have thought hearing a mighty rushing wind blowing through their midst? And what of their prayers as each began to praise God in sounds and languages unfamiliar to them? There was no mistaking what this was. What Jesus had promised had come. They were being filled with the Holy Spirit. Outside on the streets, the sounds, the commotion of their worship, it began to draw a crowd. Men and women from all over the world were in Jerusalem for a festival. They were bewildered by what they heard. They heard the worship in their own native languages. How could these Galilean fishermen, these humble disciples of Jesus, be fluent in all of these languages? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya and from Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Acts records their words. We hear all of these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. But others began to mock the disciples in their exuberant worship. Others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying they're just drunk, that's all. Peter was the first to step forward. The man who had days ago feared to admit even knowing Jesus now proclaimed him to the masses. They weren't drunk. This is what long ago had been spoken of. This was the work of God. They had crucified Jesus, but God had raised him and was now filling them with his spirit. Peter looked at the crowd and continued, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The power the disciples received that day did exactly what Peter had predicted. It spread to towns and villages across the world. Where Christ and his gospel was preached, people were baptized and filled with the same Holy Spirit. The world was turned upside down. That work continues. 
His commission to declare the good news to the world continues. His call to go and make disciples continues. And his promise of a power received by the baptism of the Holy Spirit continues. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away. Listen.